Hi and welcome! Here I have this really nice 486 board with a 33 MHz Intel 486DX CPU. It has a VESA local bus and even a header for a turbo button. The only issue is that it can only accept 5V CPUs as it does not have a voltage regulator. What I would really like to use is this 100MHz DX4 CPU. But this is a 3 volt part and will get damaged if I plug it in. Back in the 90s, you could actually buy a voltage adapter that would allow you to plug in a 3 volt CPU to a 5 volt motherboard. But these are extremely rare nowadays and possibly very expensive. In this video, we're gonna build a voltage adapter ourselves using a circuit board that I designed and some off the shelf parts. And here are the circuit boards that I just received in the mail. They have holes for both the socket headers and the pin headers and space for a buck converter. But how does it work? Well, here is the pin out of the 486 socket. The red dots are the VCC pins that provide the power to the CPU. The motherboard socket provides 5 volts on those pins. The adapter has two sets of pins. The pins at the bottom that plug into the motherboard socket and the pins at the top that connect to the CPU. The top pins are connected to the bottom pins all except for the power pins. The power pins go through a voltage regulator that reduces the voltage from 5 volts down to 3 volts. The 3 volts, shown in green, provide power to the CPU. Ok, so the 486 CPU has 168 pins in total. The outer pin layer is 17 pins by 17 pins. You can buy a 168 pin PGA socket that fits the 486, or you can even get a socket free socket. The problem is that if we use either the PGA or the socket 3, it will completely cover the board, making it impossible to solder the headers of the opposite side of the board. The solution is to use single row headers instead of a PGA or a ZIF socket and solder them in a spiral starting from the inside. In this way, we always have access to the outermost pins and can build the whole adapter with just a standard soldering iron. The headers look like this. The female ones are for the top of the adapter and the male ones are for the bottom. These are round headers, not rectangular, with a standard pitch of 2.54mm. Ok, let's build it. The 486 has 168 pins. Each header is 40 pins long, so we just need 5 male headers and 5 female headers to build the adapter. In order to form the spiral, we need to cut the headers in smaller sections, 12, 14 and 16 pin long, and we need 4 of them, one for each side. Now that we have all header sections ready, let's place the innermost ones on the board and start soldering. At this point I made the mistake. I should have used two female headers and two male headers for the innermost square. Instead, I used four female headers, so there will be two male headers that will have to be soldered from the inside, which is not ideal. Soldering the pins is a bit tedious, but not too hard.
After soldering this side, I'm cleaning the remaining flux with isopropyl alcohol. Try to avoid spilling solder to nearby holes. If you do so, make sure you clean them as I'm doing here with a desoldering gun. Now that I fitted the next row, I realized my mistake and now I have to solder the headers from the inside, which is not as simple. We repeat the process until we solder all the header sections. Ok, the adapter is now complete, let's insert it into the socket. I had to adjust some of the pins a bit, just to get it to fit properly. And now the smoke test, let's power it on to see if anything blows up. Nice, nothing blew up and the adapter feels cool to the touch. I guess no short circuits.
Now let's plug in the original 5V CPU to check if it works. But since the voltage regulator is not installed yet, we need to connect the input and output of the buck converter pads with the jumper wire. Let's measure the voltage between VCC and ground. We're getting 4.8, which looks fine. Time to insert the CPU. And no postcodes. The CPU feels like it's getting warmer though. Hmm, could it be that it's missing the CPU mold jumper? Perhaps. Let's add it to see if it makes any difference. And still nothing. Well, it turns out it was a bad solder joint on the inside of the first row. Remember I told you that this was a mistake? Well, indeed it was. Now let's install the voltage regulator. The one I'm using is rated at 3 amps and can be found at any electronics store or online. Just search for a mini buck converter and you'll find it. The voltage regulator is in, so let's turn the potentiometer to set it to the right voltage. Hmm, what is going on? The reading is out of range. Why is it 37 volts? Ouch, the regulator is really hot. Well, it turns out it was a bug in the PCB that needs to be fixed. As a workaround for now, I will place the regulator at the bottom of the board. Now that the regulator is installed correctly, let's check the voltage once more. And we're getting 3 volts, which is exactly how I set the regulator off camera. Success! We're getting postcodes! Let's plug in a VGA card to see if we are getting anything on screen. Yeah, it works! The BIOS reports 66 MHz, but I think this is wrong. The system information programs actually report 99.5 MHz, which I think is correct because of the performance numbers we are getting. Ok, that's all for now. The design and the Gerber files for the adapter will be made available soon. I'm just waiting for the new revised PCBs to arrive to make sure they actually work as expected. Please stay tuned for a follow up video on the revised 486 socket blaster. Thank you for watching and goodbye!